Just behind me is the largest breeding population of black petrels in the world. Every year they make their way here to Mount Hobson on Great Barrier Island where they raise their chicks. When they're feeding them, they travel as far away as the Kumariko Islands in order to find the best food for their babies. I'm here to find out more about their high-rise habits. Biz, what are these seabirds doing living right up here in the bush? Well, mostly this is a remnant population. They probably would have nested all the way down to sea level, and historically they actually were recorded over the entire North Island and down to northwest Nelson. This is the best remnant piece of forest, and so it's the best place for them to live. All the rest has been burnt or farmed. Rats, cats, stoats, dogs, they just decimated them. And then we've got a bird coming out, the hatch. So basically now what we're going to do is put a, a white stripe on his head. Yep. And we're putting a white mark on his head because uh, when we look in the hatches, we can spy in with a torch. And if there's a white mark, it means we won't have to bother getting the bird out again. We yep. know who it is. It just minimises handling. Why is it so important to study these guys? Well, they're very rare. They're endemic to New Zealand, only found on Great Barrier Island and Little Barrier Island. Uh, so they only breed in New Zealand. And they're very very threatened. There's, uh, there's only about 5,000 on Great Barrier Island at any one time. Uh, there's probably another sort of several thousand out to sea at the same time. If you hold that with that hand, yep. and then I'll try and pull this wing out. So you can actually see they've got quite a large wingspan. Perfect for soaring around at sea. He is beautiful. He is beautiful. How does a bird with a metre-long wingspan find its way down to its burrow? Basically, it flies around its, uh, you know, the summit here for about, well, it can be anything up to a couple of hours till it orientates itself, finds its right tree that it recognises, and then collapses through the bar uh, collapses through the canopy, just drops its wings, falls to the ground, lands with a thud on the ground, usually within two to three metres of its actual burrow entrance. It's pretty magic. And they're only on land for breeding, aren't they? They're only on land for breeding. So yeah. you only but have it is, them this time of year? Yeah, it is quite an extended breeding season. They breed they here from sort of October till June, depending if they've got a chick or not. Where are they the rest of the time? South America, <laughs> coast of South America. They migrate to South America for our winter yep. and do lots of fishing over there and things like that. And then come back in October, scope out the burrows. The males own the burrows. They come out back in October, clean them out. Um, start making a lot of noise to try and get their girlfriends back and then we're doing measurements this year this year we're actually collaborating with a French project they're trying to do a lot of DNA on procellaria forms yeah and they've asked us to collect feathers so we're going to be collecting feathers as well so procellaria forms is the is, is the this, family group and that's tube noses tube noses that's and right and you can see his tube nose just yep. there how does just, it work that's what they use for excreting salt so they can drink salt water and then they excrete salt through the nostrils it's amazing that such a relatively small bird like the black petrel can fly all the way to chile or even peru on their big oe but what's even more incredible is that every year they find their way back here to great barrier island and the neighboring little barrier island to breed and raise their chicks hello i know we're horrible and then you want to go home that's it.